Rick Budge was the engineer in charge of airflow development for AMC Jeep Chrysler Engineering from 1976 to 2001 and developed the 4-liter Jeep cylinder head, intake, and exhaust manifolds through those years. Rick also developed a 4-liter Jeep engine for drag racing in the NHRA competition eliminator class. His engine set the quarter-mile national record in 1996 at an 860 ET with the best speed of 150.9 miles an hour, spinning 9,000 RPM through the traps. This engine was built with a combination of stock and heavily modified production parts. Through this multi-part series, we'll learn who Rick is, the work he did, and his formula for building a 10,000 RPM 4-liter Jeep. I'll start by warning you, the audio quality is only as good as Rick's flip phone would allow. This wasn't recorded in a studio, and I've done the best I could to clean it up and mask the poor quality recording. Let's meet Rick. instead of me butchering what you've done. Let me just uh, ask you to tell us a little bit about you, who you are, some, some of your maybe history before you started at Chrysler, and then tell us what you did at Chrysler. Uh, currently uh, 74 years old. I've been retired since uh, 2001. I took an early retirement. I used to do head development for Jeep truck engineering, and prior to that, I was military and uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran and uh, well, <clears throat> and I had odd jobs and I was going to school college on the GI Bill school at night and I worked during the day weird concept nowadays anyway <laughs> well that was one of the reasons why I went into the military so I could go to college afterward to help me out financially you find your way to Jeep actually that's, well, that's an interesting story right there. Living in my mom's house, and across the street was an older couple, and they had a couple of sons. And one of them worked for American Motor. I would race cars because there was a race car in the garage. The Camaro, the 1967 Camaro with a small block Chevy, 327, 30 over. It was, a, it was a race car. We took it to the drag strip and raced it in a class, in an NHRA modified class, A super modified. Didn't know diddle. I was, you know, I was going to school, learning, but I was also learning going to the racetrack. We started talking. He says, uh, I said, yeah, that, is that your vet there? Did you drive around? He says, yeah, get over here. And I knew that you worked on cars, so I thought I'd come over and see if you could help me out. He popped the hood and I looked and I said, well, I see what's wrong with it. I got him going in like, I don't know, 20 minutes. He was all set and ready to go. And he was all happy and he says, wow. Hey, uh, before I leave, he says, uh, what are you doing right now? I said, I'm working odd jobs. I said, uh, I go to school at night for engineering. Really? I said, yeah. He said, well, what kind of engineering? And I said, well, I've taken a lot of electronics, but I said, uh, you know, that changes quick. I said, my big interest is automotive engineering. And he goes, that's funny, because I work in automotive engineering. And he, says, and he says, are you looking for a job? And I said, well, yeah. And he says, uh, tell you what, he says, since you helped me out, I'll help you out. I'll send you a, a air, you know, you fill it out, it's like a resume and you fill it out and I'll take it into work and put it in uh, personnel. Went by and I didn't think, I said, well, I guess that went nowhere. And I get a phone call from American Motors saying, uh, why don't you come in for an interview? I go for the interview and uh, oh, they escorted me to Steve Carter's office. And I went in and I said, uh, I'm Rick Mudge, I'm here for the interview. And he says, perfect, sit down, have a seat right in front of me. He's, and he, he, we're just doing small talk back and forth, and I got along really good with this guy for some reason, and we, we just kind of clicked. And he's, he says, uh, I see you have some electronics training. And I said, yes, sir. And he says, uh, this is, this, here's, the first, here's the first question. He had a textbook sitting on the, on the, 
uh, desk behind him. He turned around, grabbed the textbook, turned it around, had the page marked, he flipped it to the page, he put the book in front of me, he says, here, take a look at that and tell me what it is. Got it? And I said, he says, do you know what that does? And I said, yes, sir. And he says, what? And I said, well, it can be used two ways. An electronic switch, or it can be an amplifier. And he said, you're the guy. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean you're the guy? He says, you're the guy I'm going to hire. He says, I've had seven people in here, and they didn't have a clue what that was. And you just oh, right off the top of your head, just looked at it for two seconds. I said, okay. And then later on, after I got hired in, you know, and I worked, I was working in exhaust systems, and I was uh, working with the uh, test equipment for, like, noise tests and stuff to make sure it was all calibrated. And then uh, he he uh, he ended up moving out, and he left the department, and he went up to engine engineering. He was like the chief engineer of engine engineer. Hey, he gave me a call in the lab, and he said, "Hey, Rick, this is Steve." And I said, "How you doing, Steve?" And he's okay. So he says, uh, "You work on a lot of race car stuff, right?" And I said, "Yeah." He says, "Do you work on solar heads?" And I said, "Sure." You do? I said, "Yeah." Up to my office. I want to talk to you a little bit. I said, sure. So I said, right now? And he said, yeah. So I just go up there, and his secretary goes, who are you? And I tell him, I tell her what, who I am. She says, oh, yeah, he's waiting for you. Go on in. And so I go in, and I'd like to work over here in engines. And I said, uh, doing what? He said, cylinder head development. I said, well, who's doing it now? He said, well, we've got one, engi one engineer and one uh, dyno technician helping her. And I said, they're not making any progress at all. We're trying to improve the performance of the engine. And I thought of you right away, and I figured you probably could really help us out. He said, it will be a short-term deal. It will be like three months. And I said, well, sure, I'll do it. You will? He said, yeah, I'll do it. So anyway, he said, great. So he said, you'll be you know, working with uh, the, the general or the manager of the department. His name's... Uh, Later. Anyway, he uh, so he so Reuter came to where I my my work area and he said, uh, "You Rick Mudge?" I said, "Yes, sir." And he said, uh, "I got to understand Steve Carter talked to you about doing some cylinder head development." And I said, "Yes, sir." He said, "Take you over to the to the uh, flow lab and you can look it over." And I said, "Yeah, I already know all about it." And your equipment is not very good. He said, I said, it's not state of the art, it's, it, it's, you know, it's antique, really. But uh, it was all, it was all homemade stuff, you know. It was like, uh, worked off the factory shop air, so it actually blew air out. Hank on it with a sleeve that you had to put this adapter on, keep the sleeve tight so that it'd blow air down the intake port. It was shop air, that's a lot of pressure. Wow. So yeah, that was, and I said, you know, you're, 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 you know, the way you do things, that, but this is not very good. I said, I prefer to have a, I said, there's a company called Superflow that makes flow benches that would work out a lot better if we could do that. He said, well, how much they cost? I said, I don't know, a couple, couple thousand bucks. Oh, I don't know. We got the, we got the, uh, got the funds to do that. And I said, come on, this is a corporation, chicken feed. I said, you know, the product will be a lot better if I have something good to work with. So they ordered one, and I got it in a couple of weeks and set it all up, and he said, this better work. And I said, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Don't lose sleep at night. I'm, I'm on the job. So, so I on. You, you, you got to be kidding me. So before you got there, they were working with some bodge together, running yeah. off with a shop compressor, yeah. didn't yeah. have a flow bench whatsoever. It was I, it was a blow bench. It wasn't like a flow bench. It was a blow bench because every everything was blown out of this thing. So you know, for doing exhaust work it was great. Doing intake work was a nightmare because right. you had leaks and you got clay all over everything, so it wasn't leaking. And you know, it was just. A, but were they were they doing development work on just the Chrysler head or just the uh, four liter head or was it yeah. on the uh, on? Yeah, no, it was. You know, this was strictly a Jeep stuff. Four cylinder, the 246 liter, and then it was the four liter. I do. I worked started on the 246 original, mm. and I did that first, and then that was in 80. 
And then I went to the four lead. Well, maybe the four leader came in. It was the four leader and the four cylinder were real close together. I did the four cylinder and then I went to the four leader. Okay. So it was like they've been the late seventies on the four cylinder and then right into the eighties. But I had the new flow bench anyway. Mm-hmm. And and they were like, I did the four cylinder and the, the engine was so anemic it was only making like seventy horsepower. Oh wow! And and I was looking at this thing and I'm going, well, wow. well, first off. They were using a 3 8 diameter valve on the right. stem, and a real heavy, real heavy valve. But and I said, I'm, and I'm going to change this, and I changed it to a 5 16 valve. I didn't know of anybody that was doing that. A lot of people, a lot of people switched over to 5 16 after I started doing it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> In other companies, yeah. And I, I thought that was odd because <laughs> you know they have a competitive. They have a competitive analysis group, and they take mm-hmm. and they and they buy vehicles off the lot, you know, like they buy a four-liter Jeep, and they'll take it right. into like Ford, and they'll take it all apart, they'll look at everything, see what they're doing, and you know, we did the same thing. We did, the, you know, with Fords and Chryslers and GMs and even so some. They didn't buy your. They wouldn't bought your motor and figured out you were using a five sixteen stem. And I, I had a I had a lightweight valve in there. And when I first did it, it was, I had a lot of hassle from a couple of these engineers that were responsible for the part, the head, the valves, and mm-hmm. stuff. I didn't want to change anything because when you change something, it causes more work. Right. And they and they didn't want to go through all that extra work. They, you know, everything's fine. Don't change that. Hey, don't change that. And I said, <laughs> okay, uh, I won't. And then I did it. In the long run, you'll thank me. Breaking the ground there. In the next installment, we'll be talking about common issues with the 4-liter and why only 1 in 4 is suitable for racing.